I think it's called Missile Design Guide. Um, so here's one. Uh, oh, this is before the changes. This might be the most up-to-date one, though. I'm trying to see. Mm. Oh, goodness, this video took a. All right, so this this is from someone I know, and uh, it might be helpful. It might not. It is from before OSP dropped, so there's a little caveat there. Um, but it is made by a very a player who makes very good missiles and is good at that. Um, I don't know about this newer one. I'd have to watch it to know if it's a good video or not, and I don't have time to do that right now. But you can always just search, you know, uh, Nebulous Fleet Command and see what you come up with. I would recommend the other one being... Mm, Maybe JD did not. Okay, so JD's version is from seven months ago. But his is here. Hello and welcome. I'm JD, and this is. As I blast him out. This is JD's version. Uh, JD makes excellent, excellent videos. Uh, I recommend checking him out. Mine are kind of low effort, honestly. I just, you know, shoot the shit and then <laughs> hit export and I'm done. All right, so we got a 450 BB, Cole Percy. Oh, Cole Percy is in here. Cool. I remember when he was a wee lad. A brand newbie. Uh, I didn't even pay attention to what these are. All right, these look like capping corbs. Marinus over here with a 250 Axford. <sighs> yeah. I'm not a huge fan. <laughs> but um, it is going with a uh, missile backpack gun CL. And an interesting kind of... What would you call this? Is this mauve? Is this what mauve looks like? <laughs> anyway. It's not... It's not beam though. It's it's all 250. It's all 250. So we'll see. I mean, obviously, it a 250 works against OSP. Um, it's just 450 has a little bit more kick. And like I've mentioned, I'm not a huge fan of the triple barrel 250. Uh, oh no, I'm a bean coming in with his patented 250 frigate fleet. Uh, I've seen this do work. I've also seen it. Have a little bit too little firepower so we'll see how that goes and then oh it's gaming Raptor uh coming in with uh missile frigate gun cl and a rail axford woof yeah these have to be light on fillings because that is a lot of points are these torpedoes yeah okay they're torpedoes <laughs> oh, I'm so ridiculous with mob. Oh no! An early cap shuttle got caught out on A. It's being 250'd by this frigate over here. It looks like he RPF'd his own missile. Oh no. Oh, this is Goldsty. Nice. So let's swap over to OSP here. We have another mob. And, uh, <laughs> I don't know, desert green or something. Uh, wait, what? Where are the other turrets on this thing? What has happened? Oh my goodness. It's a single plasma on the top. Um, hmm. And then two? See? Hold on. I'm I am very confused. How did this player 
spend 3,000 points and come up with this. It's not... I don't... Okay. All right, we're just going to skip and move on. Uh, so with that is uh, Goldstein's 250. Is it double 250? No, it's 250, 450. So this is a better... If you are going to use a 250 Acello, um, bring some 450s also. I think that's a better mix. And uh, uh, Secret Mink coming in with the Plasma uh, T30 monitors. He's got four of those plus a point defense uh, tug. And then we have Tali. Please tell me this isn't another mine all in. It is a it is a mine all in. Oh, thank goodness he did bring uh, mass drivers with no e regs. So unfortunately, although there are four barrel barrels here, this actually fires uh, less than half as much as the four as the five uh, mass driver monitor array we just saw. And I think this, a ship like this is really why I've never respected the mass drivers before. Uh, it has four barrels, but it's not firing a whole lot of mass uh, driver rounds. And uh, as we've seen, once you get up to enough of them, they can do things like kill a CL, which I've personally never seen before. So let's take a look at the uh, fleet dispositions. ANS has gone... I believe they deploy here like this. So uh, the majority of their fleets have gone to C over here, which is the mirror opposite of what OSP has done. Very few ships have gone uh, to B on the bottom. And uh, so because of that, I'm expecting a really big fight to break out on the top. Just psychologically, uh, people are predisposed to go over the top of things instead of underneath. So, you know, just going by that, I'd expect to see the fight break out over the top. It looks like that's what hap what's happening. This line ship is taking fire. Is this the really weirdly built one? It is. Okay. I, uh, I, I honestly... I can't even figure out uh, what weapons are on this thing. I, I guess it's just these two C60s. Oh, there's mines. Okay. I mean, unfortunately, uh, these mines are not going to get dropped because the ship is probably just going to die. It's already had all of its mounts blown off. And it only has a single sun drive in it. Uh, yeah, so there it goes. It's gone. That's really unfortunate. Um, but can't say too much more about that. Meanwhile, let's see what else is going on. So, some missiles coming in to kill the already dead line ship. Other than that, a little bit of slowness happening. Lots of maneuvering. Let's see. I want to keep eyes on uh, this monitor group plus this Acelo group. This constitutes the bulk of the combat capable OSP here. So where it decides to go is going to decide the match pretty much. Um, this player that has... Oh, the, the Acello is already... Retreated? Is that... What happened there? Uh, yeah, I... Right? Okay, so the uh, so the Acello retreated, and the line ship got killed, and that's the end of that fleet. So it looks like 
some of the frigates have broken off from Oh No, I'm a Bean and are on their way to B, although it looks like this Corvette captured it already. There is this mine laying monitor down here, which is spooting out mines everywhere, but uh, it hasn't gone and actually captured the point. It looks like that's what it's trying to go do now. But uh, there's this gun frig and Corvette coming that are probably just going to uh, kill that monitor. Meanwhile, everything else is kind of slowly moving around. Trying to engage. It would be the better engage if these monitors pop out and isolate this battleship at about eh, six to seven kilometers is really where they want to be. And then have these Acellos come behind them and uh, fire support, whatever they engage. That could be a really good engagement for them. Let's go ahead and just uh, take a look and see what happens. The battleship is moving. If we look at the sensor coverage, none of these monitors are spotted right now. The OSP or the ANS has totally lost uh, vision on them completely. And if they are able to isolate this battleship, they they don't have it on radar, but they know where the concentration is. If they go around on the right side of the pillar and attempt to take A instead of meeting this broadside ambush head on, they might be in a lot of trouble because the monitors will take time to turn and they'll be getting shelled while that happens. And the Acellos are also going to... Okay, so they've seen the CL here. The CL is firing back at them. There go the reverse thrusters. They're making their turn now. Luckily, the CL hasn't gotten guns exactly on target now. Here it happens. Out come the missiles. Here comes the battleship. Hopefully, the monitors have realized the biggest threat and are going to concentrate on this battleship. The Acellos behind them. The 250s look like they're firing into the CL. The 450s are doing likewise. We'll have to see. Oh no, it looks like these Acellos are going to sail right past. It's really going to come down to if they can complete their turn around this pillar and get guns back on in time to help this 250 group before they get shredded by this cannon BB. They're already taking fire, especially from the 250 CL. It has very accurate cannons. Here comes 450 though. It's doing its job. There goes the plasma cannon. Let's see if they're gonna stay engaged. It looks like no. They wanna break off. The cannon BB has the same thought as does the CL. It's already moving behind the pillar itself. So maybe, oh, it looks like the Acellos stopped their charge. This might be doom. As one of the monitors surely will die here. That's a tough call, personally. Uh, I don't know which way would have been the better way to handle that. If they'd gone all the way around, they would have wound up running into that Axford. Obviously, they don't know it's there, but um, just the fact that they don't know what's there is dangerous. But so much time is spent reversing them, getting them nose on. By the time they finally get here, he just has to hope, really, that some of his monitor team is still up it looks like another one is getting chewed up and uh, the fire is no longer coming out of it. Here comes that line ship putting a couple mass driver rounds on and these Acellos 
desperately need to get around this corner and put fire on this BB. Everything in this game comes down to that. <laughs> Looks like the 451 is coming. The 251 uh, is having a little problem with its heading there. And the monitor group has decided to break off. Let's see if it goes back in. If it decides to re-engage now that the Acellos are finally here. That was m a majorly missed opportunity there to break the Acellos faster and get them firing at the same target. Now, yeah, I don't know what this uh, Acello was thinking, but it's currently... Um, but first towards the enemy. Maybe not the best position to be in. And uh, with that one engagement, OSP has lost initiative. I'll say it that way. Uh, the ANS team now knows which direction all the fire is coming from. If they get this battleship reoriented, it has plenty of restores. The monitors have restores also, but um, the, I think the ANS just has them outgunned here. Especially, oh, where did this CL come from? When did this CL come from? The enemy is, is this the... Huh. I, I, oh, that CL came around the corner along with the rest of his fleet, and there's only this mass driver line ship in the way, what is this firing at? Nothing? Surely it sees the line ship directly on top of it. Uh, it's kind of strange that... Well, it's definitely distracted the OSP team having this pop up on this flank. Certainly I didn't realize that it uh, had cut all the way around the map. It looks like they're turning and deciding to deal with this before they go back in and see what they can do against this uh, death ball here on center A point. The enemy secured zone boxer. They've taken Boxer again. Here come some torpedoes. Those will probably get shot down. Yep. Managed to take out the frigate. There's still this rail uh, cruiser. Okay, it's finally firing its rails. And shooting a couple missiles. Those must be side mounts because I didn't... Yeah, they're side mount. So just a... A little belt buckle there of a... <laughs> I don't know what we... What we call those things there. Not a backpack, not a fanny pack. Snack pack. <laughs> but this line ship is in a very precarious position now. All of these cannons could easily swivel across. But it looks like ANS has done a good job of uh, catching this. A cello out. It's completely broadside. This is a very dangerous position to be in. You're staring down an Axford, a battleship, and a cruiser. A light cruiser in your broadside. Oof. We'll see if it's able to pull back before getting obliterated, but it's already taken a lot of damage, and here come some missiles. Looks like they're going to slam into the 
into the nothing. Oh, they they went for the line ship. Okay. And here comes the return fire. And even more coming at the Cicello. So at this point, it's a really tough game for the OSP to win. If they'd gotten off that ambush and pumped enough fire to kill that battleship, they might be in a position where they could have taken this game. Now, because of this protracted fight, they're in the position where they have to go in to the fight knowing that all the cannons of ANS are going to be pointed at them. At that point, they maybe don't even kill the battleship before the combined fire of an Axford, uh, a Vauxhall, plus a Solomon kills enough of them that they're just not able to do anything. Uh, this battleship has more than enough health and chonk left over to tank everything. They'd have to pick off one of these ships. Granted, the CL is also pretty damaged uh, from those mass drivers coming out of the, the line ship earlier. But it's got all of its cannons up. It would also be difficult to kill. And the OSP still has this rail Axford over here also to deal with. They're just hemmed in on too many sides. There isn't a clear path that they could easily snipe out one of the ships and then push to victory. And they're down a huge amount of points. So I don't see a path to victory here for the OSP team. And they're sort of trapped they're being flanked from two sides now. So definitely, again, we see that the mine all in really is not able to contribute to a game in which the OSP team needs to take points. Those mines, I think, have managed to kill one sprinter, maybe, and all the mines are, are laid and uh, have been taken out. Granted, uh, this wasn't an all-in. I, I should should say that there was this ship available, but it did not have any E-regs, and uh, those are those are really a critical module to take with mass drivers. Otherwise, I don't have any complaints with uh, how fleets are built. Um, just, unfortunately, the fact that there is all this damage here is not going to be of much use to the OSP. Some of that depends on if they're able to... Really, the key would be uh, figuring out some way to take out this CL. If this CL isn't in the picture, the monitors would be able to push the battleship without uh, it being able to kill them before they probably did enough damage to take out the turrets. But this CL being ahead... It looks like they managed to take out this Axford. Looks like they plasma burnt it to the ground. So there's that. But they're hugely behind points. Oh. Looks like this Axford is just charged ahead. Gotten somewhat in front of the rest of its fleet. This is exactly what needed to have uh, needed to happen in order for the OSP to win is to isolate some other ship like this. They've got the Acellos firing. They've got the... Let's take a look at the Acellos. They've got the plasma firing. They've got the 100 mil. It's all being poured on. So it's not 
done enough plasma burn damage just yet, but in another volley or two, we'll really see the damage ramping up on this Axrig very quickly. And unfortunately, this Axrig is choosing to return fire on this tug, which is a, a good target, but not a critical target. Really knocking out one or two more of these monitors would be huge for the ANS. I'm not sure, even if they manage to take this uh, victory, there's still these armed frigate and corvette at the bottom of the map. It'd be impossible to win with Annihilation. They'd have to win by points. They're down so far now. It might still not be uh, possible for OSP to win, even if they manage to take out these two ships here. But we'll see how they do. Um, oh, I was wondering why this monitor wasn't facing nose on. It's because uh, the entire front part of it is just blown off. So that makes sense. So they do manage to pick up another monitor killed. That leaves only two remaining with the crucial 100 millimeter. Let's see how much plasma has happened here. Not a whole lot. And that is what's keeping the damage really down. Uh, losing the plasma cannons off each monitor as each monitor dies, it substantially makes the rest of the monitor swarm much, much worse by cutting down on that plasma. That might be an argument for, you know, it, it's a double-edged sword if you put all the plasma on, on one ship and buff it. Yes, it's much more plasma, but what if you lose that one ship? On the other hand, you could run into a situation like this where once you lose one plasma, then you no longer have that critical weight of fire to get through and burn and stop a ship from shooting you. And it looks like this Axford, although heavily damaged, along with its Voxel buddy are going to slide away and live to tell the tale. That's another monitor losing crucial. Oh, yeah, surprise indeed. So the ANS has gone and flipped the script on the OSP. What was an Axford isolated has now turned into kind of uh, splitting the OSP in half. These Acellos still have a decent chance uh, if they could get nose on. It looks like they're turning away. Why would you turn further broadside? That's... Uh, not advised right there but they they are returning fire broadside on this uh battleship a, a good throwdown fight if these were nose on right now they would be so much more effective i can't really i i understand why the battleship is broadside in order to get that rear turret and pump out as much damage as possible but these acellos being in this orientation there's no need for it. All the guns fire forward. If being nose on would protect from this 450 HE, which is instead slamming into the rear and sides and will kill this Acello in about four more volleys. <laughs> and uh, yep, insight from uh, Goldstein realizing that uh, all the plasma fire is in fact on the left side of this battleship not the right well done to cole percy changing the facing of his battleship so that this 100 mil fire that's happening now can do nothing 
to his fully armed and operational battleship. Still taking a good amount of damage from the 450 and 250 mix. It looks like it might have taken out the ammo. Probably, I'm trying to see here. Looks like no, but the guns have silenced for now. Oh, it's because the Acellos have uh, moved so far under and that bottom turret got killed. Yep, struggling to turn around. A lot of damage has been taken on this battleship. Oh, but here it comes. The big 450 volley. That's number two. So one more. Eh, maybe two more. There's still some health here. And there was some time to repair. Oof, here it comes. Yep. Nope. <laughs> One more. Eh, we'll call it three more. Was that the drive going? Yeah. So now it's immobilized. Just a... Kind of weird decision to go broadside. Definitely at least reducing the lifespan of this Acello by half. Not that there's too much to be done now at this point as ANS ticks through 850 points. Definitely well done uh, to Cole Percy and his battleship. Oh, that's so pretty. The, the ships reflect in the crystal. Nice. Yeah, and at this point, the prediction comes true. The OSP is not able to snipe out any one of the ANS ships. They're all damaged heavily in many cases, but without focusing fire and being able to take one out of the fight, yeah, Aeon Strife, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I think I might actually uh, just pack it in after this one. We've been going for a very long time tonight. My voice is starting to feel it. But uh, yeah, a slightly disappointing that we didn't see more plasma. Uh, I am ha happy that it has made a return. I shouldn't say that. We saw plenty of plasma 100 millimeter monitors. Um, they just didn't really kill anything. So one thing I did not see any of tonight was uh, plasma T30 line ships. So I wonder how those are doing. Yeah. Um, so the, the crucial moment in this match really was um, that one ambush opportunity that OSP had when the battleship was uh, broadside just sailing through the open. If those Acellos had slammed on the brakes, started reversing, and uh, gotten 450 and 250 shots into the plasma that the monitors were laying out, they definitely could have killed that ship. And that one missed opportunity kind of uh, allowed the ANS to reposition. They really didn't get another golden opportunity like that ever again. The monitor uh, swarm was severely reduced by that first opening engagement. And because the plasma and everything wasn't available, they didn't have enough uh, firepower to kill that Axford when it came around the corner and kind of everything snowballed out of their control at that point. But uh, yeah, really good job to this BB player. Uh, Cole Percy did a great job. Um, Axford CL also did a good job. This ACAP fleet, oh no, I'm a bean. Always happy to see that. And uh, Gaming Raptor, a little bit unfortunate with, um, I think there's just a little bit too many points being spread out around here. 
Um, maybe tightening this up slightly. My suggestion would probably be to take out this frigate and consolidate points into stronger uh, CL and Axford. Um. <laughs> yeah. It was a good game. Uh, definitely one ambush that... Uh... Yeah, if that one ambush takes out that BB, it's it's a totally different game. Eh. <clears throat> I don't know if I agree with Secret Mink that much. I uh one nice thing about the plasma monitor swarm is it has the tools to deal with whatever is out there, at least if you get it into range. And they had the range. They got the engagement that they wanted slightly unprepared uh, for it, but they turned fast enough to get plasma and T-30 shots where they needed it to go. It was really the fact that those Acellos uh, kind of sailed past and didn't stop and pour on fire and help out that ambush. If that one thing is different and they kill that battleship, the whole game could have gone differently. But yeah. Um, these mine, I'm not sure how much these mines cost, but I do know they did not make their points back, which is a little unfortunate. Um, you know, I think just. The problem with mines right now is they they need some kind of mechanic to stop them being spammed because if you make them too cheap let let's say you you make like one point pays for two mines or something that's probably honestly that's probably what they're worth 